my name is Ramsony and welcome to Spellsword Cards Dungeon Top. Spellsword Cards Dungeon Top is a deck building roguelike, so you know it's already fulfilled the only two criteria I use to judge whether or not I'll play a game, but it goes even a little bit further in having a combat and board state system similar to games like Into the Breach or Yu-Gi-Oh! Jaws of the Roses on PS2 if you're nasty. We'll do the tutorial here in the first episode as well as possibly a run. Woo, that's loud. Hang on. Excuse me, video game? <laughs> You're gonna have to get turned down just a little bit right there. It was not that loud in the menu. My apologies, but that is the best take of the opening I've done, so we're gonna stick with it. Tutorial. Welcome to battle, young hero. You and the enemy hero begin in play on the battlefield. You win by... Uh, to win, rather, you must defeat the enemy hero by reducing them to zero hit points whilst keeping yourself alive. So here's my character. I am the warrior. It's my hero, so you can tell that that's me, right? That's my quote-unquote player character in this game. Uh, I have a long sword for power two and eight HP, one action, one move. All of that kind of immediately reads normally for anyone who's operated with card games before. Uh, and then we've got the Helm Protector. When summoned, add plus one power to itself and adjacent units you control. Summoning. On your turn, you may summon your minions from your hand into the battlefield. You may only summon adjacent to a friendly unit. A hero or a minion. Doesn't just have to be a hero. Give it a try now. Nah. Great. Now notice that your minion is sleeping. So we can see it does have summoning sickness. It can't move or act until the end of the turn. But my hero can move. So I'll just move myself the one space that I'm capable of. Uh, my hero isn't great out here because I technically could attack this turn but no one's in range excellent at the end of your turn your remainder uh, your remaining hand cards are discarded and you draw cards equal to your mana up to the maximum so that's one for us if you've depleted mana you will regain one that is on discarding a card next turn all of your units on the board will be able to act again press end turn now so hovering over the end turn you can already see that it's telling me i'm going to draw one card based on the fact that i only have one mana Give it a hit. Attacking the damage. Your unit was damaged. Notice its HP, the number on the right, this one here, obviously, uh, is reduced by the amount of power that the enemy has, the number on the left. So power and then health. Now it's your turn to attack. By default, you cannot attack diagonally. That's why I couldn't attack last turn. Adjacency only considers up, down, side, side. Uh, drag one of your units to attack the enemy. So I'll have... That unit killed that enemy. Nice hit. When a unit suffer, uh, when a unit attacks, the defender suffers damage. They do not clash and both deal damage to each other at the same time. By default, units also have an attack range of one, so they may only attack an enemy unit occupying a square adjacent. Again, not diagonal. And then I've got a spell card in hand, the Javelin of Truth. Spell cards can be cast directly on units in the battlefield. Use your spell card in your hand by dragging it to the enemy and releasing it on your target. Spells that have the word adjacent mean adjacent to your hero. That is actually important and something that I didn't necessarily pay attention to the first time I went through this tutorial. So I'm going to deal four damage and draw two cards playing that. Mana cost. That's it. Well done. Some cards will have a mana cost that will deplete your mana pool. So we have a one mana cost card here and obviously only one in the mana pool. Be careful how you use it as your mana determines how many cards you draw at the end of your turn. And yes, you may actively discard a card by dragging it over to the right down here uh, and discard it. It'll give you one mana. Read any card description by hovering over it. And now I just have to defeat the enemy battle. Good. So I can see the enemy's hand has a Kobold Lackey in it, and the next hand is also a Kobold Lackey, so they haven't got any tech that's coming out or anything like that. Uh, and the Ashes of Taluk is a artifact spell, cannot be played when discarded, heal your hero 1 HP. So obviously the idea here is throw that, discard this, attack, move, attack. Ah, uh, right, we already attacked with her in this round. What I actually should have done there is moved my hero away at the end of that turn. Because then I could have just moved back and attacked at the start of the next turn anyway. I could have saved myself from taking one damage. Now, the reason that that will actually be important is because the tutorial tells you how to do combat. But the the level above that... The 
strategic layer? I always get strategic and tactical layers confused, but I'm, I'm gonna say the strategic layer. The strategic layer above that, the, the whole dungeon and deck building elements are things that I'll just describe over the course of this. But your hero's health is maintained between battles. All right. Learn what you've, uh, do what you've learned with the new heroes, said the effectively. So I have played a little bit of this, so I'm going to try and have the default deck and all default stuff at the beginning. I could not find a way to wipe my save file. I apologize for that. Alright. So we've got the Warrior. The Warrior is a very powerful basic class that gets strong healing and survivability talents, recommended for first-time players. And then we have our Allegiance. This is effectively our deck, right? So Guardians of the Helm. Is an aggressive archetype that focuses on bursting down opponents before they get a chance to retaliate and was originally formed as the local militia of helm sorry originally the local militia of helm was formed by workers in the mines due to repeated attempts to steal their riches helm soon raised its own loyal army full of rambunctious and hot-headed folk and then the other deck currently is a difficult combo oriented allegiance that sacrifices its own minions to gain an advantage also known as the King's Guard, these loyal, those loyal to the Kingdom of Karim often employ warlocks and support practice of the Dark Arts. We'll go with the basic deck and the basic starter. All right. And yeah, I'll explain the units as we're in battle using them. A brave new hero enters the dungeon. By what name are you known? I am Patricia. The Den. Things nest here that have not seen sunlight for centuries. The sench, sench, stench of waste permeates the stale air, and your eyes take time to adjust to the light. As you peer into the darkness, the food change of the dungeon, food chain rather of the dungeon. I cannot speak today. The food chain of food chain. <laughs> the plantains in the dungeon, which count as food. Play out before your eyes in real time as a blind rodent is snatched into the darkness by a pale green hand. The rat's last squeak is silenced by an echoing crunch. All right. So here we can see that I've spawned in this area and there's three sealed doors behind me. My only direction is down here to this goblin scout. So let's go for our first battle. I've got a 100% chance to sneak away. Chance to avoid battle. Come back later. The... Chance to avoid battle, I've never seen be less than 100%, but maybe that's just because I only played the opening missions. Fight him. So I can also actually have a look at the enemy deck before I even go into battle. Here's my opening hand. I get the option to mulligan. So the Helm Slingman is a minion unit. It has range of two, so it can attack up to the number of squares away indicated by range. And three power, but only one hit point. There's a shield, which is a spell that applies one block to a friendly unit. Block negates all damage suffered in one instance, and then you remove the effect at the start of your turn. And then Rager, minion. Two power, three hit points. Each turn, power increases by one. I'll just keep the Rager, because obviously I'm going to want to play that early so that it starts growing. And I also got a Helm Guide who has two power, one hit point, and haste. Haste being you can move and act immediately when summoned. Goblin Scout, next turn you've got Goblin Shield Breakers. They have multi-strike on them. They can perform additional actions each turn, including attacks. And then next turn you get deal one damage to two different enemy targets within range two. So if you move and then you move, I'm within range two basically anywhere except for this little box down in the corner i'm not gonna try and be too smart about this one because it's just an opening mission i'm just making sure that i don't place anyone within range for the goblin scout to attack this turn so no matter where it moves it's not adjacent to any of my units Javelin for two damage to an enemy. Also got a couple of new units here. We've got when summoned, add one power to itself and adjacent units you control. Super neat. 
as well as a pikeman who has guardian guardian the first time an enemy moves or is summoned into an adjacent square per turn attack at once really 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 good for controlling the board that one all right uh let's fuck you down there i'll have the range unit attack over the top If I leave the goblin shield... No, I don't leave the goblin shield breaker alive this turn. You might also recognize this game as quite similar to another deck building roguelike that came out recently that I've not covered. Uh, named Nowhere Profit. I enjoy the board state mechanics of this game more. It's basically the only reason. But I didn't cover that one and did cover this one. The board states of this, like, remind me super heavily of Yu Gi Oh! Duels to the Roses, which I actually have a Let's Play of on this channel, but it's back when I was a wee bitty boy. Uh, so I'm not necessarily going to recommend it. Whew. Got 15 experience there. You found loot. Click on cards to turn them over. The first two are free, three for elites, and each additional card you turn over will cost a flare stone. Flare stones are up here, we only have three of them. You can see free reveals are directly next to it. Uh, so I'll look at a minion. Oh, yes! I love that minion. Helm Banner, it's a one mana minion. Uh, cannot move or attack, but you add one power to each unit you control and it has three health itself. So you can see this star system at the bottom. That's how many times you can upgrade the card and obviously it gets a better effect every single time you upgrade it. Bear Pact Initiate. Add this minion's power to its current power when it destroys an enemy. You know what? Yeah, I need some mana minions, so I'll take both. And then you can see we've just added them to our deck. Standard kind of deck management stuff. Go to a pack leader for a fight before I go to the blacksmith. Yeah, I might pick up something here. Maybe I put down the pikeman. Yeah, I'm happy for an early pikeman. So goblin rabbles have one power, one hit point, and one block as well. I'm gonna pop you down in the corner because it doesn't need to be anywhere near me. That's completely fine. Then I'll move up, give adjacent friendly minions plus one power. Maybe I shouldn't have moved there. Okay. I'm going to put the Guardian down there and then Bear Pact Initiate over here. So the Bear Pact Initiate now has three power because the rally, so it'll get three power when it kills an enemy. I'm kind of just hoping that one of the Goblin Rabbles stands in front of the Pikeman and takes damage. That's exactly what I didn't want to have happen. So we don't get to draw much this turn as a result of what we did last turn. Played out two cards that cost mana. Oh, I actually already have lethal. Move up, attack, and then attack, move. You can move and attack in any order, and that's why this is going to work. You only have to kill the hero. Honestly, the more and more I think about it, the more and more similar it seems to Yu-Gi-Oh! Jewels of the Rolls is to the point that I'm like... Did you take some inspiration? Like, it's fine to have taken inspiration, but, like, it's a quite niche game that uh, me and four other people remember. Yeah, maybe slightly more than four. All right, so here is the talent tree. This is what you get when you level up. I've got five talents here in the top, five talents in the bottom, five talents in the bottom. They're, they're like, you know, actual lines. Uh, I will go through each and every one of them. This first episode is going to have a relatively slow pace as I explain new rules, read new cards, explain what certain strategies are and things like that. It'll start rolling faster and faster as we push this boulder down a hill. Toughness. Gain 4 max HP. Then there's practice footwork. Start each combat with 2 evasion. Evasion is the next attack against this unit misses, dealing no damage. Different to a block. Uh... Gain one maximum mana, applied immediately. Obviously incredibly important because it allows you to draw an extra card a turn, as well as play high ma higher mana cost cards if you have them. Leadership. 
Units adjacent to your hero gain one power removed if they move away. Port Haven Braces. Whenever your hero attacks, it gains one block. Then we've got Into the Light. At the end of each battle, heal up to two HP. Bloodlust. Whenever your minion is adjacent... Whenever a minion adjacent to your hero is destroyed, rather, your hero gains one power until the end of your turn. Another intelligence. Uh, cleaver attacks with a melee weapon that have no range. Cleave. So my hero has a weapon equipped, which determines their aggressive stats. I've got two power because I'm currently holding a longsword. The longsword has two power, as you might imagine. But it also has no range. So that means it would be affected by cleaver. So cleave is damage is also dealt to enemy units adjacent to the attacker, not to the defender. So you can stand in the middle of four units with adjacency north, south, east, west and cleave all of them. Multi-strike, an extra action every turn. Dash one in mobility down here on the bottom line. You gain extra moves each turn as indicated. So dash two is two extra moves. Uh, strong arm, ranged weapons with any, ranged attacks rather, with any ranged weapon gain penetrate. Penetrate means you hit all enemies in the same direction within range. Uh, another intelligence, protection, gain two protected at the start of the battle, cannot be targeted by the enemy when you have protection. At the start of the turn, remove one charge. And then greater mobility, dash two. So I'm going to start with Into the Light and probably run all the way up until Multi-Strike before I go to anything else. I kind of want to skip over the Blacksmith at the moment. Blood? Yes. Blood for the goods? I'll pay for trinkets and baubles. Could lose two health to upgrade a card or four health for a new upgraded weapon or six health for a Vampire Fang. That sounds cool. Vampire Fang is a spell. Target an adjacent unit and make a weapon attack. Heal for two health. That. So adjacent means adjacent to your hero. I guess I do intend to have a you know strong weapon on my heroes. Maybe it's fine. Goblin Surgeon. Moldy Lichen can be a medicine of a kind. Uh, honestly, both of those are pretty fine. I'll just throw away the spear. I don't want as many minions as I can get down on the first turn. Okay, uh, you... Sweet. I actually... I move up. I already know exactly how this turn goes. Guardian there, Guardian there. Basically, this is just going to completely ruin the enemy's day when they try and play that Goblin Blade. Goblin Blade does not have haste either. And Goblin Surgeon isn't actually that much of a concern of mine. So honestly, I could even put that there. Just so that it's guaranteed to be able to attack the Goblin Surgeon next turn. Fine. As long as my hero isn't being hit, I don't really mind. Uh, Do I have lethal? I'm honestly not that far from it, though. Pop that down and then get a hasted unit up here to attack. Move away. You move up and attack. Yeah. So the enemy next turn has this. Give all of your units zero and plus two. Yeah, that's not going to be anything. We've got this fight. So a lot of fights here in the early game will be quite quick. There are currently three floors. Ooh, I'm going to check a weapon. <gasps> yes! It's a short sword that already has an upgrade on it. I can then take this and then go upgrade it at the blacksmith and I'll have actually like a quite powerful sword. I want to look at the other weapon. If it's ranged, I don't care. Yeah, I'll take this. Uh, Helm, uh, Helm Houndmaster, rather. Your hounds gain two power. I don't have any hounds in the deck, and I'm probably not going to pick them up at this point. Seems like I'm a weapon deck at this point. So I go to the blacksmith. A friendly smith offers to improve your gear. The first one is free, but you've got to barter for the treasures that you find after that. So treasures are items in your deck, but 
they're also considered treasures so you can remove them to upgrade other cards in your deck or remove them in order to remove other cards in your deck at a at a temple you effectively can pay them as a resource or keep them in your deck and they'll be quite powerful cards for you as well as constitute your gold on escaping successfully gold is just a completely different system for unlocking new cards in the outside of a run level of the game so i'm not really going to focus on it at all i really wanted to get my helm mana upgraded it upgrades for three hp on the first upgrade but the second upgrade it does two power to each unit and that is ridiculous uh bear pact initiate obviously upgrades to get better stats it gets five five on its final level which is again quite incredible actually hang on the game is not allowing me to upgrade my weapon fine I'll definitely go for the upgrade on the, uh, on the banner then. A glint of intelligence in this one's eyes. Or is it just survival instinct? In fact, we'll have a look at the enemy deck. They have Goblin Strikers that gain plus one zero for each Goblin Striker on the board. A couple dagger throws that just deal one damage to enemies and target. And then, yeah, the multi-strike Goblins. Fine. We've seen those before. I mean, pretty great opening turn right there. When one of your minions is destroyed, gain one block. So they need to find ways to get rid of the enemy's block. Um... Again, I can put down the Rager and then get a really early attack, but with 16 HP, I'm not going to be really quickly killing the enemy here. Move up. Place that behind me. So I'm putting all of the minions directly in front of me, basically just so that the enemy doesn't have a path through to get to me. Hmm. Target an adjacent unit and make a weapon attack heal for two health. I mean, I can do that, and then I can move my... Eh. You know what? No, it's... You move up, attack. Then I will... Target, kill you. Move myself across. Kill you. And then put a guardian between us. The idea here being I'm just letting the blocks remove themselves. I may need to back off for a bit here. I'm going to discard that to get some... Oh, no, I already had my mana full. Dang. It was a bad play on my part, clearly. Just going to keep hiding. So if you're wondering why the non-Rhapsody name of my character... Uh, this series is going to be affected by the fourth wall tier over on patreon.com slash Rhapsody Plays. Uh, people at or above the fourth wall tier can have their name pulled randomly to go in the games whenever I get to name characters. It's a good fun time. I'm going to use the javelin to break the block. And then my hero to break the enemy. We've managed to heal all the way back up since picking up the vampire thing now be honest the game still seems a little loud to me i i hope it's not i might turn it down just a moment more uh haste and knockback on the helm clasher with one two in stats and then one two in stats as well as one mana for the helm shield breaker at the start of each turn add a copy of shield one to your hands shield one is the card i already have in my deck i actually don't want either of those so i'm gonna skip them okay two-sided portal in the temple the temple is for removing cards so I honestly won't use Slingman often in this run if I can avoid it. And again, the first service is free and then you have to pay for any past that. Two-sided portal. A mysterious portal lays glowing in the center of the room. One side, you see a normal path. The other, a darker and more dangerous route with more loot. Which side do you dare to enter? Obviously. Obviously, we go to the dark path. As you step through the portal, you hear a screeching of gears and a deep rumble as a giant door to the next room opens 
So these doors at the start get opened as you explore wings of the area. Orc Lieutenant. The Masters of the Dens have sent out a raiding party. So the board state, as you can see, is not always the same size it was before. It can be larger. Just a thing to know. Uh, go now. Ooh, that's actually really good because I'll just discard the spell happily. Getting an extra mana back, so I draw up to three this turn. Thank you for the free kill. That was Guardian triggering on my pikeman. They have range three. Ooh, this is actually going to be hard. I I thought we were kind of just going to phone this one in. So if I move up or across, the Orc Slinger has like a free shot at the pikeman next turn. I have to wait until that Orc Slinger moves out of that position. And since you have range three, if I even move my hero unit over, if Patricia moves over, the Orc Slinger can take it. That's all really bad. Um, I'm going to play the two damage to the enemy here, literally just to deal some damage to the Orc Lieutenant. I honestly probably shouldn't play the Bear Pact Initiate here. It'll die way too easily, and it'll cost me a card next turn. At the end of each turn, heal adjacent friendly units for three, the Orc Shaman. So I can currently do three, three, three. Hang on. I might have lethal this turn. Because that's three damage, that's three damage, that's three damage. And then this one, the Helm Scrapper, when summoned, add one power to itself and the adjacent units you control. So if it can buff all of these, no, it's not going to be able to buff all of them at the same time. Get all of them to four power and then attack. But honestly, as long as I don't take damage on Patricia, I'm fine. So I can kind of throw units into the Thresher here. Just a moment as I figure out exactly how this one's going down. Hmm. Fine, we're going to have to only get one power out of it. But honestly, the extra power doesn't matter at that rate. And that can't even move. Fine. I'm actually going to move my hero away just so I don't take any damage. I should have looked at what my... Yeah, I should have looked at what the next hand for my enemy is. Did this thing? Yeah, this thing had haste and knockback. So knockback is on attack. Push the defender backwards as indicated. If it cannot push, then damage is dealt instead. I'm going to use that to heal my hero a little bit by attacking. And then we heal at the end of the match as well. Back up. Ah, here's an example of a treasure. Minion unit. It is power two and hit points two. It counts as 30 treasure, but it counts as a treasure. Uh, just broadly. And when played, draw your next spell. So it just doesn't cost you a card. Free unit. Real good. This is a two-star unit already. It's got haste and leap two. I actually quite like that. And then a smithy shield, uh, sorry, spear bearer rather. When destroyed, add a copy of Javelin 1 to your hand. I actually don't like Javelin 1. I'm taking those two. Let's take out the Orc Scout. Large shadows on the wall precede an Orcish patrol who tosses the shattered body of a kobold to the side as they move to engage you. Let's have a look at the enemy first. You get dash one and you've got two moves. So you can move twice and then twice again. Right? 
Your movement distance? No, 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 no. It's, it's just one extra move as one extra space. So it can get to here or it can get to here. So I can start putting my units down here if I'd like. I don't really want to attack with a Helm Rider on the first turn. Ideally, I want to set up a board state. That's a board state right there. I'll say that much. Got a whole lot of units that can move into play to take those down. Uh, you've got Devar. Gains the power of anything it destroys. The Orcish Warhounds there. There's another Rockish Warhound, unfortunately. Um, I'm gonna move your lot and then Helm Scrapper for a buff on everyone. Have that unit taken out. Because now if the Orcish Warhound moves across to try and take this out, it won't. It'll die. Um, so it won't get its Devour off. But I guess the Orc Scout can hit here, move across, and then the Orcish Warhound can come down to the Pikeman. No, but then that other Pikeman will kill it, right? Guardians. Got him. Okay. First thing I've obviously got to do is pop that down in the corner. Get a free book as well. Oof. So the Bear Pact Initiate kills and then gains four power. Which also gave strength to Patricia because it died next to Patricia. Uh, then I'll naturally attack. I'll even attack for another seven. If only I had a second attack after that, it'd be fine. I'm going to move a space away, but honestly, it really ought not matter at this point. The enemy is probably, yeah, they're just going to suicide themselves into me, basically, at this point. That's fine. If I only lose one health over the course of that battle, that is good enough. Another Bear Pact Initiate? I probably don't want that many more minions at this point. I'm going to look at the weapon. The weapon is the fire bow. Arcing, apply, burn one. Arcing is you may attack the number of squares indicated away, but not adjacent, right? So you cannot attack the target next to you. Uh, and burn, on attack, apply an effect to the defender. Each turn, they take damage equal to the number of charges, and not moving removes the effect. So it's like a poison that you have to move in order to get it away. Take another bear pact initiate. I probably don't want that many more minions at this point. I like running a good old thin deck. Two haste units in the first round isn't that great. Unless I'm going for some sort of a blitzkrieg, but this is not going to work here. I don't have enough power yet. Adjacent friendly minions gain plus one multi-strike at the start of each turn. That's not good for us. Hmm. Only by popping a unit down and then moving do I have the ability to buff two with the Helm Scrapper, but honestly, I just prefer to buff the Bear Pact Initiate. Actually, you know what? I can do it by not moving at all. Only problem is I don't get to move my hero closer to the enemy at that rate. Neat. So we'll make that attack and then move across. You get to move across and then make that kill, getting you a bunch extra right there. I'm going to have the Helm Scrapper move up kind of sacrificially here. I 
Yeah, I can't play the pikeman on the other side, have it get killed by the goblin chief, and then the goblin rabble kill the helm scrapper. It's just too lost. Too much value lost. That's multi-strike for you. Thankfully, though, Bear Pact Initiate is about to get real powerful. And as long as it doesn't end up dying to the hero chief, we'll be fine. Oh, yes. We actually managed to get block for it as well. That's so good. Uh, what is the rat you're about to play? Give you minions plus... No, it's fine. The rat's basically a totem. Just put that there. And then that there. Effectively, I'm now just crowding the enemy with units so they don't have anything they can do to me next time. Move away, pop that down, and then kill him and become a 26 attack minion. Another new treasure, a gold orb. Attacks from this minion chain. Repeat the effect on a random adjacent unit until there are no units left in the chain. I imagine adjacent to the minion I attack rather than adjacent to myself. Otherwise, that might as well just be called cleave. Interesting. I mean, we do have a lot of attack buffs, and attack buffs will work very well with that gold orb right there. I'm going to look at the spell. Bolster. Friendly minions with less than max HP gain 2 power. No, no, no. I, I honestly don't really rate that spell. What seems to be an elderly woman peers at you from a room covered with bone charms? Come to purchase a blessing, child. Should I heal or curse my foes? Lose 20 GP treasure, a curse upon your foes child, or I'm restored. Yeah, I'm gonna curse my enemies, sure. <gasps> oh, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want to give away either of those items. They actually work quite well with my deck. If they didn't, I would have already gone back and thrown one of them to the blacksmith for the upgrade on my uh, banner. Listen, sorcerer, in a dimly lit room, a single robed figure is waiting for something. Perhaps it was you. Hmm. Definitely want the Grimoire in my opening hand. Deal two damage to a random minion and one damage to adjacent units. If there are no minions on the board, instead deal three damage to the enemy hero. Okay, so my goal here is actually to just run at the sorcerer and deal as much damage as quickly as I possibly can. In fact, the strategy is effectively do that or lose. And one to adjacent units. So if I move you there. Cool. It got the two. That's fine. Oh my god. I think I... Yeah, I already got it. Good thing I have a relatively fast build. You can see that being a problem otherwise. Oh, look at the weapon. Arcing 3? No. Okay. Nah, I'm also not even going to take that. Uh, so, Flare Stones, I'll explain in just a moment after this. Let's get... Yep, there's our mana. Go, go for it. Okay. Really? It's not even going to show me the Flare Stones right now? So, apparently, the Flare Stones can be used to reveal an area of the map. I don't necessarily actually know yet how to do it. But I've been assured by the game that's what they're for, as well as turning those over. You hear a whisper come from a crack in the roll. Psst. Ventural. Your time. Shiny trade us. No plus. Leave or shiny trade gain floor map. Uh, no. I'm almost done with the floor. And also, the map actually doesn't help me at this point. Because I still just have to go down the same paths. It doesn't seem to be very non-linear, uh, at least in the maps that I've encountered so far. Again, limited experience, though. Ogre Cook. Pots the size of barrels and pans big enough to fry a man litter the floor of this makeshift kitchen. The gargantuan ogre in the room reaches out to grab you. That's a big old unit right there. My opening hand is even much larger. Love it. Throw those... 
Okay. Ogre Cook has Cleave. It's going to be a bit of a problem, as well as Into the Pot and Into the Pot. Both of them spells. Grab an enemy minion within range 2 and put it in the Ogre Pot, destroying it. Next turn, summon a Gloop adjacent to the pot. Gloops have Last Word. Deal 4 damage to the unit that destroys this minion. Last Word is effectively like Death Rattle or any of those kinds of effects you might imagine. On Death Trigger. Uh, then we have the Ogre Pot over here. Block 5. Doesn't actually seem to have that right now. Uh, but cannot move or act. If destroyed, deal 30 damage to the Ogre Cook, which would instantly kill it. So you can only move one. So you'll move to like here. And then range two is here. Right? Yeah, so I can put my units like here safely even. And in fact, likely will. Getting the adjacency buff on the units that I think need it. So into the pot costs twice here. Does nothing. Enemy's next turn is food fight. Deal three damage to a minion within range three. If that minion is destroyed before the end of your next turn, heal for three. Otherwise, that unit heals for six. So if I have a unit that can run away, it's a great time to have that. Attacks chaining from the gold orb is nice, but not really going to be relevant, I don't think. So it does have cleave, so I do need to like get my units away from the ogre at the end of the turn, ideally. Because like at this rate, it can just move down and then attack and kill both my units. Throw that attack as well. I'm actually going to have a couple of sacrificial units here. Just trying to set up for a better later turn. So both of those take the hit. But oh, I'm still too far with the. Hero. We get a decent amount of damage this turn. Not enough, though. Yeah. Javelin don't really do that much for us, unfortunately. I'm going to move up and then attack here. Oh! I've never used a chain unit before. It hit my own unit. I did not know that was how that happened. That sucks. Wish I could play that. Um, spacing out my units here. And beautiful. That should be lethal, right? You do that, move their attack. You do that, move there, attack, and then... Yeah. Had to take one hit on my hero, but honestly, could have been worse. Two new treasures. We've got the Ring of Meme. Give a target plus one multi-strike this turn. That's actually really good as well. Uh, is it really good? It's just plus one attack on a unit. It's like a, ha it's, it's like a haste unit, basically. Uh, and the Ancient Machine, a range 2 splash unit. Nice. I'll definitely take that for kind of like backline artillery. I'll look at the weapon. Ogre Spatula just has plus 5 power on it. Perfect. That's a melee weapon as well. Oh, that's going to be really good for my hero. I'm going to take a potion also. Gain plus 3 mana and consume. Consume removes it from your deck. I don't really want that. I'll take the Ring of Neem, but I'm probably going to use that to upgrade my banner. Yeah, fine. 
There's a healer as well as a magic chest. Let's get the magic chest first. Open it, obviously. Uh, select an artifact to keep. The Karim Pact Scroll. When played, lose two health. Draw one card and the card returns to your hand. Or the Reaper's Scythe. Uh, deal your power as damage to any adjacent unit. If it destroys the unit game, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> I'm also going to quickly go to the healer and take a quick sip. You can also greater heal for paying a treasure card, but I don't need a greater heal. I don't believe at the moment you can zoom out, or if you can, I don't know how to. I'd like if you could. Just saying. Let's take the upgrade on that by paying one treasure. Get the Ring of Neem out of the deck. So you can see now that it's a 0-10. And it gives two power to each unit you control. One of the reasons I'm going to want to keep my deck relatively thin is so that I can try and hit this real early. Right. Then we'll take another portal. And this one just goes back to the first floor of the dungeon. It doesn't give me a choice. Obviously, the other path that's not opened here was the easier path I could have taken. Uh, as you step through the portal, you hear a screeching of gears and a deep rumble as a giant door next to you opens. A circular portal with a dial stands alone in this room. It looks like there's something missing from the dial. I, you know what? I've never done this before, so I'm going to insert a treasure. I'm going to get rid of... Yeah, I'm going to get rid of that. Splash, obviously, would be damages adjacent units to the target, just in case... Oh, the mysterious portal is first alive. Will you step through? Teleport to boss. I don't want that. The boss is in the next room. Dang it. <laughs> Just lost a treasure for nothing. Lizard matriarch. The air is thick with the scent of shed skin. As the corner of the room, as in the corner of a room, a lizard twice your height curls itself around a pile of eggs. It seems you found the queen. I don't really want haste units on my first turn. I'm, you know what? I'm fine to set up a slingman though. Actually, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna full mull. I'm, yeah, full mull looking for the helm banner. Exactly what I wanted right there. Uh, so the enemy next turn plays the alpha egg. After two turns, you destroy that minion and in summon uh, and its place summon a lizard alpha. I'm actually gonna be placing my units in such a way that I might actually be able to get to it soon. Because that thing really got to die. Oh, they have leap three. They can travel the number of spaces over other units in a single move. Uh, and at the end of your turn, spawn two lizardling eggs on random empty squares. Move you up, have you take that hit, and then block you. And continue moving you further over and move my hero further over here. That was that's a bad turn for us. Tell you that much for free. <laughs> Just blocking me from the eggs. How dare you? So one of the eggs instantly got killed on spawn from the pikeman. That's really nice. Uh it doesn't look like I'm gonna be capable of taking out the alpha egg. These units have block. I'm going to put that there basically just to defend myself. Okay. Lizard Alpha has multi-strike. I'm just really hoping that the Lizard Alpha doesn't, uh, or does have summoning sickness, rather. So I'm going to move up and then attack, getting the damage that will actually clinch that. Then I do need to also make sure the Lizardling Aids die so that I don't get more Lizard Warriors on the field. Use the Javelin to take out the far target that would be more difficult for me to hit. Alright, 
I will I will be able to kill one of the lizard warrior units myself with that and then the helm. Then I'll move over, play the rush unit, which moves one up, taking this out. And then if I pop this... No, even if I pop that down there, the lizard warrior can just move in the other direction and still hit me. I've got to also make sure that the helm barrier doesn't go down, but it has enough HP that it's not really in threat. I'll go down there and take that quote-unquote free attack, and then I want the more mana next turn, so I'll throw Let's see what the enemy actually played there. Protect the eggs. Gain plus one... Uh, sorry, give each friendly minion plus one plus one for each alpha egg on board. Lizard alpha. That... Lizard alpha is terrifying. I mean, it's kind of terrifying, but it's not going to do anything to me. By all rights, I should win the match before that happens. I'm popping myself in the corner here because the Lizard Matriarch is also kind of in the corner. Uh, actually, I'll even move that out and then put that there. So no matter where the Lizard Matriarch goes, I have units there ready to attack her. And her units cannot get to me. I kind of want to see if I can just chain through all of my own units here. Except for my hero, if I can avoid that at all. One there. One there. One there. One there. I'm just trying to form the largest chain possible. You go there, you go there. I actually prevent myself from being able to win this turn by doing this. Am I okay? I'm not okay with that. Murder the enemy. <laughs> I was just thinking that might be a huge achievement or something like that, right? Ooh, an artifact. Seeker's Home. I love this. Look at your deck and discard pile and choose a card to draw from either. That's effectively like a second way of drawing the same card for me. The, uh, the banner. Yeah, still just be taking that. There's our Malay Cleave. Hell yes. You spot a caravan heading for the exit. Would you like to convert some of your treasure to gold before continuing? Your gold will be safe even if you do not escape. That's what the conversion means. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I, I would rather keep my treasures because they are quite good. I know we're 52 minutes into the ep 53 <laughs> into the episode, uh, and this is the second of three floors. But you know what? It's the first episode of the series. It's totally fine if this episode is long. It's just a way to showcase the game and show it off to new people as well as to play through a run. Plus, when have I ever shied away from having long videos on my channel? <laughs> All right. Um, bleed 2. Bleed 2. When attacking, apply a stacking effect that increases damage taken from attacks per charge. Okay, so it's like uh, adding vulnerability to the target. Gains 1 block for each time this unit takes damage. So I have to hit it with singular large attacks, ideally. Also, haste dash last word. Uh, haste dash one, right? So if you move there, they can go there and then move or then move. Like this whole area of the map is in threat. Anything in this top triangle here.
Curses adjacent units with Mark for Death. Mark for Death is unit takes double damage from all sources. Okay, cool. Let's draw a card. I honestly don't know which of... Uh, I guess I'll take the one that will get stronger over time. Thank you for those placements, I guess. Appreciate it. I don't know why you did it. Right? Appreciate it, at least. Um, take that kill. Sure, marked for death, but I was going to die anyway. And now the boss is marked for death. That seems fine. I'm going to play... Actually, I should probably should have put the pikeman up there. The idea behind this is just I don't want my own pikeman hit. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> Wait, is Jason? Deal your power as damage to any adjacent unit. Oh, it doesn't count as a unit! No, it does! What? Huh? Deal your power as damage to any adjacent unit. If this destroys the unit, gain plus two, plus zero. I don't understand why this wouldn't work in this instance. I have lethal anyway, but... Strange. Ooh, bound gin. Uh, we get a five power, three HP, uh, HP rather. Unit has phase. When this unit attacks, it swaps place with the defender in the process. I actually don't care about the gin here, so I'll probably end up removing that. Uh, I'm probably not going to get something better than the spatula, so we'll ignore that. Helm guard. When summoned, add plus one power to itself and adjacent units you control. Uh, definitely better than the other options that we have so far for doing the same thing. And then Hound that has haste and dash. Honestly, it has good HP. And it has dash. Yeah, I can take Hound. Let's go to the random event first, just in case it gives me a card. You come across a freestanding alembic with a couple of vials below, filled with strange liquid. Take the vials and get two potions. Select any cards you wish to keep. Apply haste to unit you control, or three. Yeah, haste is almost always pretty good for us. Then I'll toddle off to the blacksmith so that I can remove the gin from my deck by upgrading something else. So this goes to 4-2. Yeah, some of them just get more stats rather than increased abilities. In fact, most of them just get more stats in my experience so far. See, I imagine the Helm Watch's third level is probably plus two power. You know what? I want to find out. I'm going to upgrade it there just so that I can see. Nope, it just gets an extra health. Bad. Okay, we'll take... Oh, that was the free one. I haven't even removed the gin. Honestly, I probably want to come back with something else. Let's go fight the fire titan. The walls grow hot and a dancing red light illuminates the dungeon around you. A block in the passage in front of you lifts and falls. It's only as you approach that you realize it's not a red wall, but the foot of a burning giant. It's a lot of haste in turn one. 
All minions suffer two burn at the start of your turn. Each turn they take damage equal to the number of stacked charges. All of these units save the hound, and then the hound will probably just get attacked by the enemy. Will die! I should probably get units that won't necessarily die from that. Still got units that will die. Uh, we also have Wickerman. Uh, the power is equal to the number of charges. Uh, sorry. Has power equal to the charges of burn on this unit. So the enemy is not going to... Oh, they will move, actually. Not moving removes the effect. I actually kind of want to extend a little bit further. I'll use that just effectively so that my uh, Rager is a little bit further over. Burn, got him. I can save my own Rages from the burn with the... Uh, with the shield. Don't necessarily want to, though. Next turn, Spreading Flames, Chain. Target a unit with stacks of burn. Units adjacent to that suffer one burn. Kind of okay with that. Uh... I mean, I don't want to cause more adjacency, but... These things do need to start dying. And then let's draw a card. We probably should have drawn a card at the start of the turn to figure out what we really could have done there. You know what? I'm actually going to take the Reaper Scythe. It worked. Cool. I don't know why it didn't work last time, but I wanted the extra stats that the Reaper Scythe was going to give me there because now I have the ability to one-shot bop those. I have to use this to target an adjacent minion just for the health, basically. Okay. Perform knockback three on all adjacent enemy units. That's not that much damage. And I need to get my own hero over there to start dealing some serious damn. I mean, if I make that attack... Ooh, Ogre Pate, deal 12 or more damage with a single unit to a large unit. Neat. That's haste to a unit you control. Honestly, I don't want the haste. Not right now. My idea here is that the large tie is probably not going to move backwards, and then I will have the opportunity next turn to just move up and kill. Oh my god, I'm going to kill so many enemies at the same time here. I'm drawing the next spell just in case it healed me. And then... The hero and both of your golems down at the same time. Got him. I'm taking all of these fights because I really want the level, especially the next level is going to be big for us. Uh, Helm Hast, no. And a Junkyard Thief. When summoned, remove block from adjacent units and give this minion plus one power for each charge removed. I am going to need one of those. There's a lot of block later on. Plus one action in every turn. So now my, uh, my hero will occasionally just walk up to an enemy and then just... And then the fight ends. <laughs> Ideally, I guess. 
Uh, the creature in the room seems to be a fusion of many forms. Dozens of worm things writhing together in one body. It speaks in harmony, battling a language you do not understand, but is unmistakably hostile. If I could move myself one further, the Vampire Fang would be really good here. Can't be good in the opening round here, though. Redraw all of those. Destroyed enemy units are exhausted from your opponent's deck. That removes them from the game for the battle. Fine. Uh, and spell, devour the weak. Destroy the lowest power minion on the board and heal your hero an amount equal to its remaining HP. It destroys rather than dealing damage. Right? It's the lowest... Lowest power minion. Okay. I'm gonna put the orb down and then sack that for the extra mana back on the next turn. I would love if I could move up right now, but I can't uh, trust the Mantry not to move down, attack one of my units, and then kill another one. Please. Oh! Yes! That's all I wanted. Thank you, game. Thank you much, Lee. Take my extra. Oh! <laughs> Okay, uh, I can deal 15 damage to the, the Amalgam this turn very easily. Let's get that out of the deck. Six more. Any adjacent unit. Okay. It clearly it means minion and it says unit on the card. That has to be what's going on here. It's the only thing that makes sense. Uh I'm gonna apply haste to this. So you can attack. Move up. Uh, you can attack. Uh, you can attack. The only really annoying thing here is that if the Reaper Scythe went off correctly, I would obviously already have to kill this turn. But if I'd known that it was going to be bad like that, I would have uh, I would have attacked in a different way. Like I would have had my Hound attack and then moved back down. And then I would have used the Reaper on the Hound, buffing my Patricia, and then Patricia would have attacked and I actually would have still gotten killed this turn. Honestly, I... I don't want to waste my mana on either of those. Two HP lost in that fight. That's fine. Is manageable. It takes three turns, and oftentimes three turns is my whole combat, before dual scimitars is better than what I'm currently holding. I'll take the second Helm Rider, though. Excuse me. Just getting a sip of water there. A silhouette of smoke and fire rises from the stone floor, pointing one skeletal finger at you. That's a lot of haste. Do I want haste? It has range four and only one attack. So honestly, I kind of do probably want to swarm it really early on. Uh, target a minion and deal five damage to it and two damage to all adjacent units. Okay. I'm using this effectively as a way to just... Honestly, I don't even want that. 
to just make sure that my units aren't adjacent. It has range four, but again, like as long as I don't move, it can't get to me. It'll only do two damage next turn though. Adjacent enemy units can't move. At the start of your turn, deal one damage to adjacent enemy units. If I stand here, it cannot move any of the grasping monstrosities onto me. Nice. I'm just buffing up my hero until my hero is just gonna one shot buff everything. I need some way to like, as soon as I increase the like move of my hero, and that's obviously the next path line that I'm going down, uh, then this is going to be ridiculously destructive. The deck is about to go off. Just about to. Give your minions negative, neg uh, negative one, negative one until the end of the next turn. For each minion affected, give your hero plus one, plus one until the end of the next turn. Okay, so as long as I get rid of the minions, literally the enemy does basically nothing next turn. It's fine. I believe I've also limited the shade from even being able to get contact with me. Mm-hmm. Certainly looks like it. And 10 damage, 10 damage. Please, level up. Ugh, five off. Uh, new treasure, a spell. Target a unit with a regular attack. That's non-buffed. Uh, that unit and all adjacent units with a regular attack gain plus one power in range three. Honestly, no. We probably want to get that out of the deck. Like, use it for treasure really early. Again, the scimitars that I don't have. Yeah, fine. The thing is, I probably want to wait until I get the temple before I use those treasures for removal. Because the deck has now a lot of garbage in it. The garbage was in the base deck, so it's fine. Uh, once white armor sheds ash as the broken corpse inside it lurches to its feet, raising a hammer that still glimmers with a sliver of blessed energy. Oh, that's a bad turn. Um, knockback three, and this has dash block one. When a unit is destroyed adjacent, this minion gain plus one power. Oh, it's fine. Oh, right, the knockback. Ryan, I should have known that was going to happen like that. If I attack with the gold orb now, I actually remove the... The block from each of them. Interesting. What? Until there are no u new units in the chain. So, it's a, a random adjacent unit. Okay, so it's not guaranteed to chain through everything, unfortunately. Unfortunately, that's really what I needed. Do that. Pop that there. Throw you down. You fly across. Put the book up there as well. That's, that's pretty good. To adjacent units you control, okay. 
So first attack and then I make my first attack and then I harvest. That gives me extra strength and then I move and then I make my second attack and I kill. Uh, this is target a minion and give them an adjacent enemies uh, take three damage on the at the end of your turn. Target a minion and give them three adjacent enemies. It's fine by me. Um, I, I'm pretty sure the enemy just conceded. Kind of. Look at the spell. Nope. Nope. Don't want either of those. I get my dash. Perfect. We are going to do a lot of damage on turn one to a lot of our enemies now. It's going to be really good. Go to the temple for the removal. Uh, the other ranged unit, thank you. And then also... The pikemen, honestly, at this point aren't... Like, I, I'm a Blitzkrieg kind of, like, run straight at him, get him kind of deck. I'm going to pay the treasure getting the gin out of the deck, and then I'm going to pay the treasure getting the other thing out of the deck. Hey! The deck just became a whole lot better. With only 20 cards in the deck at this point, and a lot of them fetching other cards, I very, very commonly get my Helm Banner out early, and that's just plus four damage each turn on Patricia. I want to go to the random event before I do anything else, though. A vampire fang? Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Vampire fang is just deal my damage. Definitely also open the loot. Select any items you wish to keep. No, no. Choose a friendly minion. It attacks each adjacent enemy minion, and then they attack it back. I theoretically could take that, but honestly, I probably don't want any of these. Shopkeeper. Wandering Merchant shows you his wares. Let's see what you got. First one is free, and then we'll trade for the treasures. Uh, so there's another flare stone. Yeah. To reveal rooms on the map with. But it also gives me 15 gold at the end of the run. I'm going to quickly go back to the healer, take a quick sip, and then kill the Manthree Counselor. This will actually level me up again. I'm going to have a look at my talent tree here. Yeah, that gives me a range upgrade. I honestly don't need that. Honestly, like, the next thing that I want is uh, greater mobility. I don't want to level up three things just to get to it, so we actually start leveling up the toughness tree after this. Like, whenever your hero attacks, it gains one block is ridiculous, obviously, as you might imagine. Start each encounter with two evasion means I can get real aggressive real early. Let's have a look at the board state first. Uh, Master Counselor, if this creature would be destroyed by any incoming damage, if there is a counselor on the board that would not be destroyed by that incoming damage, that counselor takes the damage instead. Wild. I'm just going to move down and destroy that unit right there. Uh, so all I have to do is look for all of the damage that I can find. That'll definitely do. <laughs> yeah, by thanks, great. Alright. I'm gonna have you start. And, in fact, I'll throw you up there to deal the damage to someone else as well. 
Your hero loses two health and your units gain plus two, plus two. Yeah. Patricia is going to take a little bit of damage here. It happens. I don't know what I'm drawing right now is the thing. It might just be another vampire thing. Yeah, fine. Actually, I'll attack there with that and then vampire fang to kill the adjacent target to me. So that I don't have to worry about taking damage. Uh, and then your units gain zero, two. Cool. We've got it. Why did that grub not move away? You had a way to win. Live. Not win. But win. Yeah. Uh, actually, I probably should have just discarded that one. That's my bad. this controlled gestalt at the start of your turn lose one health from this minion and for each other friendly minion on the board to give each other friendly minion uh, unit plus one power huh? unfortunately it's directly in the path that i was kind of looking for i should have looked at what my enemy was about to play there All right, I am now incredibly powerful. Come at me at your own risk. Perfect. Slap him and I'll take all my experience. Thank you. Two treasures as well. Both ones that I kind of don't want, but I mean, I can remove two more cards from my deck. Or I can carry them to the end of this floor and then trade them in for treasure. Yeah, I'll probably do that. I kind of want gold. Spell. Uh, remove two HP from your minion and give friendly... Uh, from your hero and give friendly minions plus one, plus one. Not interested. Not interested. Also not interested. Take plus four max HP there. And back. Don't actually want to do that. Boss entrance. All right. So it only took us about 20 minutes to clear this floor. So in under two hours, we'll be done with this video. In under two hours total, not under two hours from now. Well, you know, you've, you've got the scroll bar at the bottom. You can already see what's up. I can't, that's the thing. Uh, okay, block two, friendly units up to speed plus one. Range, penetrate. We've seen penetrate before. Uh, adjacent friendly minions cannot be destroyed by minion damage. When a play, uh, when played, chain apply to burn to the adjacent enemy unit, and then Ash Legion Bowman range. Whenever an enemy minion is destroyed, add one charge of Soul Arrows. Soul Arrows at the start of your turn deal one damage to the enemy hero for each charge. I do not like this. Bad draw. Oh, come on! I have so many minions and so few attacks in my deck. Why do I get all the attacks when I need them to not be there? You know what? I'm gonna kill the book for damage.
definitely pop that one down. I kind of want to kill the Ash soldier. What are you doing next turn? Uh, enemy units within range 3 suffer 2 burn. Friendly units within range 3 heal for 3. Look, no one's attacking any of my units next turn, so I could just spend all turn prepping if I want. Actually, no, if it moves there, then it can use range 2 to attack my gold orb. That's annoying. My gold orb is basically never going to be able to get in range here. Unless I give the enemy something else to attack. And in fact, I will do so. like that. Even heal back up to full. Goodbye, Ash. Static pylon. Whenever an enemy minion is summoned, shock the enemy hero for three damage. Cannot move or act. Minion heavy decks are actually a little bit of a problem for... A little bit. They're, they're honestly not, not, not that much of a problem for me, but I kind of want to have that. And deal your uh, deal your power as damage to a line in all uh, sorry to all units in the line from your hero starting with the adjacent unit. Obviously, we'll take both of those then. Uh, I will also start combat with two evasion. Oh my god! Convert treasure and then get. Honestly, I think I probably get the gold orbs out of this deck at this point as well. All right, Rustin Golem. Who knows how long it has lay dormant in this tomb. It has multi-strike and your summoned units will have range and multi-strike. Okay, I'm going to move up. Because the gr Rusting Golem isn't going to be able to get in range of me there. Rid of one bear pack there. I'll summon that one and then get rid of that one. Okay, it's the best I can do here. So I can kill two of them at the same time with Patricia right now. Well, not two of them. Like, hmm. I need a way to start moving my enemy units. Ideally. I can't get my hero in the right line for that, unfortunately. Take a big hasted unit. Put that down in the corner. That hasted unit will then. Hang on. Let's try and find the best placements for mine. Just to try and hem my enemy in. You do have multi-strike and I am... ...direly terrified of that. Honestly, it is almost certainly just going to move straight to my hero and double attack. If they are in range, they almost never stray from that. Thankfully, I have evasion. 
bad positioning for me given the clockwork snipers though. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good though. Damage in a line. Again, looks like I can't use that to kill the hero. Hero gains plus one, uh, plus two power for one turn. I can even upgrade that though. Magma Wolf or Levusion. Actually a little threatened in this fight. The problem is if I don't play my strategy that I've been building around, you know, run to the enemy and hit them hard uh, and try and play a minion game instead, I'll lose because my minions are bad. My hero is great though. You just destroyed by a vision race. Yeah, that's fine. Obviously, I have to find that one down. Uh, last word: deal three damage to all enemy units in a line towards this uh, towards the unit that destroyed this one. So I can't use my uh, I can't use Patricia to kill those. You are really kidding me right now. This is annoying. Next turn, deal five damage to all enemies within range two. I mean, as long as I end up over here, we're fine. I'm honestly going to go for the hit. What happened? The next attack against this unit misses. Well. That hurt. Not how I thought that one was going to go. <laughs> Meteor Strike isn't an attack. Meteor Strike isn't an attack. I died. By relying on uh, Last Word's damage to not be able to hit Patricia for those two hits, I, I effectively just murdered my own character. That's... That's unfortunate. Can I do? Yeah, I just die next turn, then what do I do? Damn it. What? Why didn't it move before? Okay. How do we win now? He's attacked by this minion or rooted for a turn point. Uh, you move over, make that attack. And then... I need to double attack and then just double run away right now. I mean, I can put down a final one, but it's not really going to do much at this point. Alright, 
I need to make sure that I use my Vampire Fang for a kill here. Just for the healing it provides, and then... Heal up a little bit more. Okay, never mind, we're still alive! Barely, but still alive. Destroy an enemy minion, an adjacent enemy minion with power less than your hero. I do need more minions in this deck at this point, and fewer spells, though. That's starting to become very, very obvious. We'll go for Liquid Steel first. I don't really know anything about any of their decks right now. That has Multi-Strike 2, give yourself minions to block. Retaliate. When attacked by a target in range, automatically attack back if possible. I'm gonna run away from that one and try and go for the mag wolf then. Um, range three, burn two, and a couple rooting units and a meteor strike as well. Burn three dash two. Yikes. Still probably the best I can do. Yeah, I'm just gonna take a hand of solid minions right there. You have burn three, but never mind. So one, two, three. This is the threatened area. Oh my god! It's exactly what I wanted. Thank you. Um, enemy is about to play three units, so I can have them take nine damage from the static pylon. Maybe, actually. No, with the amount of minions I'm about to put on the board, the banner is still going to be better. Okay. You there. Got to take the opening damage when it's available. Ooh. Absolutely brutal. Have we won already? Yeah, we have. Just gonna quickly move up here to secure it. A lot of the time, the enemy will, like, intentionally, it seems, reveal themselves to your weapon. Speaking of a weapon, Holy Longsword. It's great. It's triple powered up. But it's not better than my spatula. Because it doesn't have anything else on it. Take a friendly minion off the board and put it in your hand. No. Uh, let's get... I'm going to go to the random event. First, obviously you drink a drop potion. Good thing I did that because now I don't have to go for the greater heal. Black Spear. No, I don't have any treasures right now. Yeah, I don't have any treasures in the deck, so I just get a normal upgrade. Lost three power for a turn. Neat. Should I remove the book? What would this become? Plus four. That's like plus eight damage. Oftentimes cleaved as well. No, I need the book as like a free minion to play on the field. We've seen the problems I have before. Uh, let's purchase. Let's have a look at some of these. Uh, on a duel, we've seen that before. Uh, stands behind. Discard your hand and give a minion plus one plus one for each card discarded. No. Penetrate and has range two on the lance, but like its power is three. 
I, I still need my extra power because I'm multi-hitting. Alright. The neck of some gargantuan serpent blocks your path in the tunnels. Oh, I now only have a 75% chance to get away. Interesting. Immobile. When this unit is destroyed, destroy your hero. Okay. My understanding of how this works is that it means my hero. I'm not certain though, but I, I, I think that's how it works. Regardless, I'm, I'm just going to wait. I'm not doing anything. And then the enemies rotated, and now it's there. We'll just move up there. I think it's to try and make sure that you're just precise in your targeting in this fight. Level 10. Oh, we got a new treasure. Regeneration. Wandering Wall. It uh, heals up to its max hit points. Oh, so the Shield Master only upgrades by having not a better copy of shield or more copies of shield but just by getting its hp and hit points oh, okay. garbage also garbage i'll take the treasure though uh hero adjacent to you know, fine. i really wish that i got one more level up before oh never mind i'm not even fighting the boss right now and that experience will get me my level up good Perhaps once this hulking iron giant was a humble butler or porter for a dwarven family. Now, it's merely an unthinking destroyer. Let's have a look at the board again. Dash one and guardian. Guardian's gonna be a bit of a problem. I'm just not going to get within range this turn. Whew, definitely not going to get within range this turn with that hand. Why do I always draw my best cards on the turn that I don't get to use them? Let me eat that book for damage. That's three block on the enemy there. Pop that down just to get rid of the retaliation. So I can move up to... It's fine. Um, I can get one attack off on the Rampage at Golem. Honestly, it's still probably worth it to do. Actually, up for more than one attack. And then, honestly, I just need the other units down to try and lock the rampaging golem into this area and then I kill it next turn. Yep, there's no adjacency the rampaging golem could have put anything down on, so he couldn't put anything down and died. Nope, neither of those. Skip. And whenever your hero attacks, gain one block. Oh yeah. Game's basically over at this point, I think.
Last word. Put a Chaos Corruption in your opponent's deck. When discarded, deal three uh, deal three damage to your hero. When discarded, deal three damage to your hero. Consume this card when played. I imagine Consume is forcing me to discard it, despite the fact that that's not what I thought Consume was. Otherwise, that card doesn't really make sense. Start with that, move back, you move across, hit that, then you move back across, then you jump across and hit that. Fine. That's a haste for you. Oh, everyone's attack and power was flipped, it looks like. Yeah, at the end of your turn, uh, swap the power and health of all minions on the board. So that killed my, uh, my totem. Well done, game. You got me. Can't get my hero close enough, unfortunately. Destroy a friendly minion and summon a copy with double its power and health. Yeah, that's okay. The end of your turn, and the enemy's not going to play any minions next turn, so I may as well not play the static fight. Honestly, I may as well not play most of these. Really not going to change too much. Thanks, bud. Sincerely appreciated. Uh, let's go for... Uh, again, just complete skips. Honestly, it feels like basically from now on out, I'm going to be skipping. One of the dwarves' greatest achievements was the thinking machine, designed to weave reality at a rate they could never parallel. And it still does, for its own ends. Mechanical Godling. At the start of your turn, your enemy chooses two cards from the top pile to exhaust. And the enemy is just going to try and exhaust out my deck. Fine. I think I have a mulligan face because that sucked. I love that I keep getting that book on my first turn off of the other book. It's perfect. Scar back because it's not actually going to be able to help us. I don't need to attack the enemy this turn. Gonna get a bigger guardian now. I'll exhaust both of the bear packed initiates. Honestly, I'm not gonna need them. When an enemy card is exhausted, they also lose one mana. That's fine. Summon three random minions that were exhausted in this encounter. Why? I knew that was coming up next turn. Why do I exhaust minions? Ugh. It's a bad play on my part. Gonna get some extra attacks out while I can. Throw down that. And get rid of the Reaper Scythe. Those are being discarded rather than 
exhausted so I don't have to deal with the consequences. So because it tried to summon the units, but it was completely surrounded, it looks like it just didn't didn't manage to. Uh, sure, get rid of those, I guess. And then I just walk up and absolutely murder you. Bye, mechanical godling. There's a new god in town. Patricia. Uh, heal unit you control up to 5 HP. Uh, you can also use healing potions outside of combat, so that's one of the reasons that I'm going to want to loot that. Just in case. A primal shard of the force of creation oozes its way across the floor, ready to reshape you. Come and have a go if you think. Oh, no, mate. Uh, it's... What does the enemy have? When this unit takes damage, change its next action. Interesting. And then when summoned gains plus one to plus four power. Okay, interesting. Um, let me get another mechanical wall because both of those are actually going to be like pretty great. Also going to go for that attack right now. Changing the enemy. Perfect. Meteor Strike. You can do Meteor Strike happily. I do not care. And I will not care. Uh, because I'm going to surround you with units that will heal. And in fact, uh, that has uh, shuffled you down to this area where you are now going to be completely destroyed by me. The walls are closing in. I'm hoping to give the enemy their minions. <laughs> enemy gets to attack and then passes their turn. And yeah, I'm going to have one of the walls get the kill here. I knew those walls would work well with the banner. I kind of wish I had another banner in the deck, but at this point, I'm not going to be greedy about it. Yeah, we've seen all of those. One more mana turn. Let me go for the random events as well. Venturi, here come shiny tray. Yes, me no place. Same floor map. No, don't need it. Temple for free card removal. Honestly, probably like one of the garbage spells. What garbage spells? Oof, I'm gonna get that out of the deck, I guess. Drop potion. I'll drink it because it's an event. So if I leave it, I just don't get to come back to that event. It's only locations you can come back to, like blacksmith, temple, shopkeep, etc. And chests, apparently, you can come back to. I don't know why that's a thing, but you can come back to chests. Ooh, that's a treasure weapon. Neat. I gotta make sure that my character decides not to use it, so yeah, I'm gonna re equip this. Uh, but it says whenever you destroy a minion with this weapon, add a copy of a random warrior spell to your hand. Don't care about that, though. All right, Serpent Head. A deep hiss assaults your ears and penetrates your spine. Through its gloom, you spot a giant serpent coiled in sleep. Okay, no. When it moves, spawn a new uh, serpent neck from a sonic. No, I don't care about that either. I don't really need to give a minion haste right now. Really wish I had the ability to get to the serpent head here. Deal three damage to all units in a range three line. Uh, 
Follows the serpent head when it moves. When this is destroyed, so is the serpent head attached. Got it. Can I not get literally all of my attack spells in my opening hand, please? It seems like that might, I don't know, help to not have that happen. If only I had a ranged weapon, that'd be cool. Wait, what? It's my turn again? Okay. Just gonna hyper buff my hero here. Bye, servant. Pretty sure that's not the boss. Weapon, garbage. It's garbage too. Fine. Yeah, no, here we are. Core Hydra. The Doom of the Grand Forge. You are playing first. This is your starting hand. Select any cards you would wish to redraw. The remainder will be kept. So having a look at the board, there's a bunch of Hydra heads out here. When this unit moves, it leaves behind a neck. Starting. Okay, so the previous battle was just to teach us how these work. Uh, and then the hero. Whenever a Hydra head is destroyed, lose 10 HP and summon two more Hydra heads, maximum of six, adjacent to a neck section. Cannot move or act. Got it. I can kill a Hydra in the first turn if I want here. With the with the greater rage. I'm just gonna redraw a couple of those. Actually, I can kill it with the Reaper's Scythe now. Perfect. Two, and then... Scythe for the power-up on myself. I'm gonna put that there, so basically no matter where the Serpent Head decides to move, it's gonna take a hit. And then a that. Uh, nothing really else we can do for the turn. Might as well chill. I've got rage back in hand. Let's use that for anything. No, it's not really. Bad. No. It just looks like I still use two attacks to kill the Hydra Head. Actually, you know what? No, I use Shockwave. Because I'm not going to be able to use it otherwise. Hey! And now I have other units to attack. Beautiful. Yeah, you can move again. Beautiful. Okay, uh, we'll take that and then... You attack there, I'll move up one and hit again. Great. Cape Hydra now only has 50 health left. I should have had the static pylon out this entire time. I wonder if that actually would have been significant. I'll place that down just to have an extra minion on the board, but honestly, it's not really going to do much. Uh, that This one has already attacked, so all I can really do is cut off the Hydra head. As in, uh, cut it off at the pass so it can't get here. Not cut it off, cut it off, but also cut it off, cut it off. Oh god, I would love to be in that position myself instead. Uh, any enemy unit that is adjacent to a next section takes two damage. Let's 
Let's have a look at our draws and discard piles. I think it's probably Reaper Scythe right now. I wish I could look back at the screen. During that phase, unfortunately can't. So I'm going to pop that up there and then go... Hit. I mean, I can't move again. Scythe for the kill, getting more powerful. Then I'll block you from that side. And honestly, there's not going to be enough attacks on Patricia next turn to kill. May as well give haste there. And nothing's missing health, so no need to use the potion. Oh my god, really? Really? No. Damn. I was very much hoping that they were going to leave three of them that I could attack adjacently at the same time, but they uh, they elected not to for some reason. I can't imagine why. I'm going to do that attack first. Second as well. Then I'll move down, use this to kill an adjacent unit. All right, and then summon a hasted hound for the final kill. That is spell sword cards dungeon top. Whew, that's a that's a name chock full of the keywords that I find constantly in my inbox. So, I like everything about this game more than I like the name of the game. That is the most positive way that I can phrase that. Let's skip that. Then take the upgrade. All right, convert treasure, I guess. Yeah, convert treasure. And I convert all of my treasure. You venture deeper into the dungeon. It appears this part of the dungeon is still under construction. A sign near the door reads, Congratulations on making it this far. Look out for more content in future updates. You spot a stairway on the exit to the sign. And that's an escape for us. We are level 15, which is apparently max level. I thought I was still one short of that. Maybe I got a bunch of experiences I was leaving there. And managed to keep 330 gold. Let's go back to the main menu. Dungeon Top Early Access. We've been working on this for quiet, uh, working on this quietly for a little while now, and we hope you're going to like it enough to continue playing all the way through to our official release. At this early stage, the game is still being built, and there are so many things it could be. Your feedback is going to help shape the game in the weeks to come. To that end, we want to hear everything you have to say about the game. What's good, what's bad, what's weird. The best places to submit feedback would be the Spell Sword Cards Discord channel and the Spell Sword Cards Reddit. There's buttons below. Uh, but you can, I have to imagine, find them on the Steam store page that will also be linked in the description down below. Good luck getting to the third floor, Bryn, the dungeon top designer. Thank you for having designed this, Bryn. It was a grand old time. For the moment, though, my name is Ben Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Dungeon Top Spell Sword Cards. Okay, actually, I think it's Spell Sword Cards Dungeon Top, but they're just inverted here in the menu. Because I know in the Steam library it's Spell Sword Cards colon Dungeon Top. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. Uh, I usually do content on games like this, so this if this happens to be your first interaction with me and you've managed to stick with me for two and a bit hours now, number one, wow. Number two, maybe subscribe if this is the kind of thing that you're into. Also, if you do like the video, please click like. It does help me get my content out to new people and expand the channel and all those kinds of good things. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.